Alright, so I'm going to show how to redo the thermal paste on this Dell Inspiron model 5570. So I already took this apart. Um, if you want to see, I have a disassembly video on that. So just look for Dell Inspiron 5570 disassembly and look for its bin. Um, and you should be able to find my channel. So anyways, we're going to just be redoing the thermal paste here. The fan broke earlier and I think I actually repaired the fan on this, but um, probably while the fan was broken, this thing got too hot and then the thermal paste, um, dried up and now it's no longer effective. So we're going to remove all these screws using a PH1 or JAS1 screwdriver. Okay. Keep the screws in order because, oops, sorry. Let me turn that off. Okay. So you want to keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shapes, and lengths. <clears throat> okay. So let's take out these three screws here. Most likely this is going to be somewhat difficult to remove if the thing actually overheated um, because the thermal paste underneath is going to be dried up. So we'll see how it goes. And these four screws for the CPU here, they actually stay attached to the heat sink. Only these three screws come out. Okay. All right, so we're gonna remove all these screws. All right, so as you saw, it was lifting, so actually it comes out pretty easily. Okay, so here we go. So what we're gonna have to do is clean off this paste, and then we're gonna have to add new paste. So we'll get a piece of paper towel, okay? And what you wanna do, I usually will do this over a trash can. Um, so I can't really do that. Well, let me see if I can do that here. Let me move these computers and things out of the way. Okay. So I also got a MacBook under here. Let me move that. Okay. And we're going to move this aside as well. All right. So at least for this part, I'll show it, but for the computer, I'm going to have to do it off camera. So what you do is you just get a trash can and imagine this is the computer. And while you have it upside down over the trash can, you want to wipe off the old paste. Okay. Okay. Just like this. And if you're wondering, no, you don't have to disconnect the battery for this repair. But if you want to be safe, yes, you can disconnect the battery. Press and hold the power button for 10 to 15 seconds um, just to prevent risking any damage caused by electrical um, electricity being in the capacitors and stuff. Okay, so we cleaned up the heat sink for the most part. I'm going to set that aside. And again, um, for the computer, I'm going to probably do that off camera. So I'm going to pause the video, going to clean that up, and I'll be back. All right, so I cleaned all the thermal paste off. And also, if you get stuff stuck between these little pieces, you can get a toothbrush and just kind of brush it to get them out. Just make sure that you clean off any thermal paste that falls on the board from there. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to get a paper towel. And then we're going to get some isopropyl alcohol, 91% works really well. And then just get that piece, um, a little bit of alcohol on it. Okay, you can get the bottle and just pour it on the napkin or paper towel. And then we're going to just clean these shiny silver parts off because that's where the thermal paste is going. And then I use the dry part of it just to dry it off. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to use this to blow any dust or lint away. All right, and then, so now we got that. You also want to do that on the copper part of the heat sink. Actually, let me zoom in more so it's easier for you guys to see. Okay, so just like that. All right, so I'm going to clean this off as well. And you want to be very careful not to bend these heat sinks because if you bend the pipe, then um, this pipe actually has a vacuum with some some water vapor in it. And that helps actually transfer the heat really well. So here you can see how dirty that is. So I'm going to fold this over the other way. Put some more rubbing alcohol on it. And then I'm going to clean this some more. Okay. Clean it all up. Go. You can see it's still gross. So if you want, you can keep cleaning this until the paper towel doesn't get any more um, dark grayish brown or whatever on it. Okay, clean it up some more. 
And a lot of it's also the oxidation because I'm actually rubbing off to the side out of the area of where the thermal paste was. So that's kind of just cleaning up whatever dirt and oxidation on the copper. So that's pretty good. All right, so once you get that all cleaned up, what you're gonna wanna do, we're gonna get some thermal paste, okay? So I like to use IC Diamond. It doesn't have any issues with electronics. So if you get it on these little capacitors and stuff, there's no issues. Um, and that's and also IC Diamond, it helps, or any diamond thermal paste um, pulls heat really well. Okay, so what you're gonna do, you put uh, about the size of a grain of rice on this thing, and you wanna keep it in that long, um, long stretched out tail. Okay, like this. So you actually don't need too much thermal paste. When you put the thing on top, it will actually smush the paste out and flatten it to where it covers the entire um, core or die or whatever you want to call this. Okay, so let's put a tiny bit more. That's probably actually too much, but oh, there we go. And actually, if you put too much, it's also not good because then it'll go out to the sides and then it will kind of just hold the heat there. So you want it to be as nice as you can. It's kind of hard to judge how much to put, but um, yeah, about the size of a grain of rice. And then you're gonna put here as well, but this it's so thin, so you put a lot less, okay? So just like that, and that's probably also a little bit too much, but it should be okay, because it's not gonna way overflow. Okay, all right, so like that. And then on this chip, you put like a small little um, circle blob as well, okay? So this one, since it's a square, you don't want to um, make it into a grain of rice size. You just want it to be like a dot. Okay, so make it like a little ball here just like that and once you put the thing on top you don't want to lift it up because if you do then um, it will actually introduce air bubbles so the reason why you make it like a mound like this is when you put the thing on top um, all the air bubbles will get pushed out to the sides and it won't actually stay trapped under the paste um, if you have a big tube of paste like this and you're doing this for the first time and you just want to check if you put enough paste you can go ahead um, push it down pull it back up and then see how far the paste spread out and then um, if it looks good you can clean it up and put the same amount and that should be good so that's a way you can actually test to see if you're putting the right amount anyways now we're gonna put this back so they actually number the screws so there's one two three four five, six, seven. So you want to put the screws actually in that order to help spread the paste evenly. So I'm going to line up the screw hole down here first. Okay. And then line up one and or the one and four screws. Okay. Just like that. And then what I like to do is go to screw number one, twist it backwards. You'll hear it click if it falls into the screw slot properly and then twist it one, two. All right. And then leave it loose like that. Then we'll go to the second one. Same thing. I hear it click, one, two, okay. Then go to three, one, two. Then we'll go to number four, one, two. And then we're gonna go to number five. We'll get this screw back in. Okay, one, two. Then we'll go to screw number six. Oops, okay. Go to screw number six, one, two. All right, and I'm twisting it backwards until I hear it click so I know it's in the slot, in the screw thing properly okay one two and then after we do that I'm gonna tighten this more one two three okay that tightened all the way so I'm gonna do them all like that one two three tighten it all the way okay one two three tighten that all the way go here one two three tighten that all the way then we're gonna go up to here one two three oh these screws are much longer so tighten that all the way we're just gonna tighten this all the way and we'll tighten this all the way. All right, then after that, because the paste sometimes takes a little while to spread, it shouldn't be an issue because these things are kind of springy and it will slowly push the thing and get closer to the chip as it needs to. But you can double check all the screws, make sure that they're tightened all the way down, that it's not gonna 
be have a little bit more room to turn okay okay and now I'm gonna reassemble it <clears throat> again if you want it to be safe um, you could you could have removed this battery connector here I didn't do that because um, I'm usually pretty good at doing this so but yeah for if you want to be extra safe doing this and of course you want to make sure your computer has been shut down but you can pull this cable out just grab the wings here here and then you kind of just wiggle it as you pull it out but anyways I'm gonna leave that so now we're gonna put the cover back on let me zoom out here my desk has a whole bunch of junk on it right now but anyways we're gonna put this cover on so we did this we'll do this side first okay slide it down and then we'll slide over and then push this down all right then you want to open it up and make sure that you clip everything in place okay going all the way down oops I turned it back on I didn't mean to turn it on yet turn it back off okay I need to turn it off and put back all these screws okay let's put back these screws now I'm gonna have to do a restart afterwards because it detected that there was no CD drive when I turned it on okay so put back all these screws get the CD drive slot that back in all right you can put these back screws in that stay in place first okay oops drop my air blower all right Tighten those all up okay and we'll get the rest of the screws let's see here did I do something weird one two and then three and three okay all right, we'll get this screw for the CD drive here. We'll get this screw. Uh oh, I'm getting messages. I need to hurry up with this video. All right, we'll get these last three on here and then the three on the other row. Again, after you do this, you want to restart the computer one time. No, actually, it shouldn't matter. I, I'm restarting because I accidentally turned it on. Oops. But that's pretty much all there is. So hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, please like and subscribe. Help others find my videos. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I'm just going to power up the computer and restart it. And we should be good to go. Alright. Put it into sleep mode. There we go. Alright, so the computer's on, but I need to restart it. Restart anyways. Okay. Alright, and that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.